So today I'm going to be taking a look at a Meistersinger, which is a brand not a lot of people talk about, not a lot of people review or even I guess look at to purchase, but I just think they're a really interesting brand, got a kind of a unique place in the market, and let's take a look at it. We have a diameter of 40 millimeters, a lug to lug of 47.5, a height of 12.3, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some other general specifications for the watch, we're going to have the Miyota 8285 movement in here. It's going to beat at around 21,600 vibrations per hour, have a 42 hour power reserve. Uh, we also have a sapphire crystal on the front and back. They don't really state whether or not they have an AR coating, so I'm just going to kind of assume no. We also have 50 meters of water resistance, no screw down crown though. And last but not least, this is retailing at $11.95 direct from Meistersinger. So moving on to the dial of this watch, and I think this is the most interesting part of the watch, and the main reason behind that is because this is a one-handed watch. You don't see a lot of one-handed watches on the market, and I think Meistersinger is kind of at the forefront of that one-hand watch movement, uh, no pun intended. As you can see, we have the very, very prominent I guess you can call it the minute hand-ish, just I guess the time hand in the center stack here. We do have it kind of capped out with that circular white disc on the very top there, very cleanly done. As you can see, the very edge of the tip is actually painted red, which definitely helps with legibility. It also ties in with the other red accents on the watch here. We have alternating kind of numerals and just hash marks. I think it's pretty interesting that they went with kind of O2 instead of just two. It does add a good amount of balance to the watch, especially since we have 10 being one of the very prominent numbers displayed on the dial. It definitely makes it more sporty versus dressier leaning, but I don't think it looks bad the way it's executed. One thing you should notice is that every 30 minute mark between these hours, uh, every, basically every hash mark is five minutes. And if you can see, every 30 minute mark is actually shown in red here. So it's actually pretty easy to get kind of a grip on what time it is at a quick glance. And I think that's a nice kind of attention to detail, a nice touch for the watch. Not only does it nicely tie together all the other red elements on the watch, being in the, the date wheel as, as well as the tip of the seconds hand, but it also just is functional in helping you read the time quicker. On Meistersinger's website, they will tell you that basically the date window being circular is meant to kind of represent and I guess kind of echo the shape of the case, while the date window actually kind of mimics their little logo right here, which I guess is a nice design inspiration. Is there really many other ways to do a day date kind of layout if you're doing it at the 12 and six? Not really. So I guess it's kind of, yes, inspiration, but part just regular function of the watch that needs to be carried out. Overall, I think the dial here is pretty well done. It is very clean. It really doesn't kind of stand out too much. I think the red accents, while very prevalent, are a little bit more subdued than you would think right off the bat. And overall, I just think the dial really comes together really nicely. Black is kind of more leaning gray in some lights, which gives the dial a nice dimensionality. So overall, well done, Meister Singer. So taking a closer look at the dial, we can see all the text is pretty well done. Uh, you can see that in the little smiley face portion of the Meister Singer logo there, we do have that little red dot. That is a little imperfection that obviously isn't noticeable from the wrist, but on this magnification, you can see it, it is an imperfection. We also have that little portion of the hand here. The red paint has kind of seeped onto the white hour hand portion. But other than that, there aren't really any other real major or really even minor imperfections with the dial from what I can tell. It is really cleanly done. All the lettering is done really crisply, really nicely. You can see there is kind of like some beveling or kind of cut down to that uh, date window there. So really nice attention to detail. You can also kind of see that the date window itself as well as the day window up here have a kind of slight texture to them which is nice. I mean, just overall, I think it is really nice that they ended up going with a matching color date window. Uh, would I have preferred maybe black? I think maybe it would have blended in a little bit more, but again, this does really complement all the other red text on the dial or really red accents on the dial. I really do like how much dimensionality these numerals do have to them. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think the numerals are actually loomed, which I think is a kind of misstep for Meistersinger. There are a lot of white elements on this dial that could be loomed, and I believe the only parts that are loomed are the kind of these outer uh, hour portions here. So that is unfortunate, but it is a cleanly done dial. It is nice to look at, and it's pretty well executed overall. 
Moving on to the case of this watch, and while simply done, I think there are a couple elements which are just kind of nice attention to detail points. Starting kind of with this bezel portion, as you can kind of see, it's not a normal kind of flat or really just, I guess, afterthought type bezel. It does have a nice curve, a nice dome to the actual bezel portion here, which I think just kind of blends into the design really nicely. It kind of makes the flow from the case to the bezel to the crystal a lot easier of a transition, which I think is just a nice attention to detail. Uh, as you can see there, the crystal has a very, very slight dome to it. Not huge at all by any means, but it is nice to see that they took the effort to go for a dome rather than a flat sapphire. Uh, just overall, we do have an all polished case on the very top. Nothing really to write home about. We have a very fine horizontal graining on the case sides here. And then as you can see, a nice kind of like signed crown with the Meister Singer logo in there. The brushing is done really nicely. I, I would assume it's done by a machine, but it is very even, it is very fine. So it is a kind of quality finishing there. Overall, very simply finished case, but again, well done. If we move on to the case back, it is very, very much an unfinished movement, really. All we have is kind of a simple attempt at a custom rotor. It is definitely nothing special to look at. I would have liked if Meister Singer would have done something more with the movement, especially for something retailing at the around $1,200 price point. You can start looking, especially at the used market, at something like a Nomos, which is gonna have a very, very much finer finished movement inside of there. So it would be nice to see at least a little bit of striping, at least a little bit of decoration from the movement here, rather than this very, very utilitarian, kind of almost off the shelf finishing. One last thing I would like to note about the case, and while it is slightly on the thicker side of that about 12 and a half millimeters, it does take its thickness well. As you can see, there is a pretty good amount of curve down to those lugs there. They almost meet the case back, so it does wear really well on the wrist. Uh, there is a kind of a beefiness to the lugs in themselves, so it, that does kind of shine out from the wrist. It is very noticeable. But overall, I do think the watch wears well. Everything is in a really nice proportion. The crown, I don't think is too large at all. It has a good kind of knurling on it type will be able to wind it really. And yeah, it is a pretty good case. Moving on to how the watch wears. And earlier I was wearing my Grand Seiko Skyflake. So here we have the watch on my 6.5 inch wrist. And I think as you can tell, it does wear its size pretty well. It does have a pretty constrained lug to lug distance. Although it is on the taller side, it does from basically my point of view, wear pretty closely to the wrist overall. So I do think it kind of just wears well. Obviously there is kind of a bigger expanse in the middle of the dial, making it almost seem possibly a little larger than it might be. But overall, I've really never had a complaint with how the watch wore. It does wear very thinly to the wrist, wears very comfortably, doesn't dig into the wrist at all. And as you can see there, it does kind of just kind of conform into the wrist. It does not sit above too far at all. And yeah, it really is a pleasure to wear this one. It is on the larger size at 40 millimeters, but if you have a larger wrist, I don't think you're gonna notice the sizing at all. If you have slightly under 6.5 inch wrist, it might start getting a little big for you, but overall, I am completely fine with the sizing. So trying the watch on a couple of different straps here. This is one of my favorite straps to put on almost any watch, and it's a white silicone strap from um, Archer Straps on Amazon. And I think it just complements the watch really well. It plays really well off of the white accents on it. It just, I think, looks good. Again, silicone is just one of those straps that are just really, really comfortable on the wrist. Perfect for summer. Just overall, really nice way to add some color to the collection as well. And as you can see there, it helps the watch wear a little bit better, a little bit slimmer to the wrist, even though it didn't really have any problem in the first place. But yeah, I just think it looks really nice. Moving on to another combo here. This is a, I believe, kind of one piece twill NATO from, I wanna say this is from Cheapest NATO Strap. I'm not 100% sure. They all kind of start to blend together at some point if they're not branded. But I do think this kind of dark red helps play off the red tones on the watch. These types of straps are really comfortable on the wrist as well. Uh, very, very low profile. They don't add much thickness to the watch at all. Overall, I think it just wears pretty nicely on the wrist. It does look kind of nice with that red complementing the red and obviously the black complementing the blackness of the dial. It is a combo I wear on it a lot if you want to kind of go all out on that red theme. And yeah, just another kind of combo to have some fun with. Looking at the loom here on the Meister Singer, we have a pretty basic application. It overall is pretty well applied. It does last a decent amount of time. It's not anything that's going to lasts all night by any means but while it does last it is pretty legible 
Again, we only have it on every hour marker here and most of the hour slash minute hand is illuminated except the red tip. Uh, overall, you kind of do get a sense of what time it is. Obviously with the Meister Singer, it is kind of hard even when it is in daylight to tell what exact time it is. And here it is even harder to tell what time it is. But you do kind of get a general sense of, you know, what hour slash what half of the hour you're in. So it's not too horribly done. And I appreciate Meister Singer went for any loom at all. Reluming and comparing to the Snoopy as I usually do, as you can see, the color temperatures are pretty similar. Uh, they have a pretty much same brightness to them. And that just kind of proves that Meister Singer did a pretty good job on the application. Obviously, the Timex will last longer just because it's on Indiglo, but this will kind of give you a general idea of how bright it is if you've ever owned an Indiglo in the past before. Moving on to pros and cons, and I think one of the major pros for this watch will just be the design of it. It is unique. It is not like anything else out there for the price point or even just in any other price, really. It is a fun watch. It has some very, very fun color combinations. I think the way they've implemented the red here was not only really, really well done, but it just looks nice. It has nice attention to detail with the fact that they put it in the day and date window and it was just executed really, really well. And that just kind of brings me on to my second pro and the fact that this is a different and fun watch. It is unique. There's not a lot of other one-handed watches out there and it kind of just gives you a different feeling. I mean obviously you have like different types of watches. You have a three-hander, you have a chrono, you have a moon phase and this kind of feels like its own thing. It doesn't have necessarily a complication to it. It has <laughs> lack of complication really and it is interesting to have. It mixes up the feel of the watch on your wrist it mixes up the you know wearing experience of it and it kind of gets into that mindset of you know time isn't super important all the time i guess it is just something we have fun with it is our hobby and this is a really fun watch to remind you of that moving on to some cons uh i think one of the major cons will be that for some people this watch will just be too out there i mean can you still tell the time to a relative good degree of accuracy within like a five minute range yes but for some people, they want that like pinpoint accuracy. They want to be like on time for a meeting or something. So this necessarily isn't the best watch for that purpose. Uh, but it is kind of a watch for a certain subsect of people. They don't care about super accuracy. They don't care about the fact that it looks different. They want it because it is different. But it's up to you whether that's a pro or a con of the watch. Another more kind of like design-wise con of the watch would be the fact that it has like a visually large dial. It doesn't have a very big bezel, so the dial itself is large for a 40 millimeter watch. And on top of that, it actually has like a lot of negative space on the dial itself. The, all the text is around like the very extremity edge of the dial. So there's a lot of empty space in the middle, which creates the feeling of the watch being bigger than 40 millimeters, which for some people with maybe larger wrists, that will be a blessing. And for some people with smaller wrists, they may not like it. For me, I have a 6.5 inch wrist, but I think it is relatively flat compared to some other people. It, I think it still wore well. I think it was nice. It gave a different visual look than the watches do, but for some people it might look too large. Moving on to my last con, and that will just kind of be, this is a somewhat expensive watch for kind of like a novelty factor. There are some other watch brands out there that do single-handed watches. There's, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's like Luke or Luch or Luch. Uh, is like a Russian based brand and you can get those for like 50 to hundred dollars on Amazon or eBay. There is also slow, I believe is S L O that also do one handed models. And there may be some other brands that aren't coming to mind, but even though there aren't a bunch of other brands that do one handed watches, there are some that are more affordable. So you may want to look at around those avenues first. You might want to try out a Luch watch before, um, you try out one of these because maybe a one-handed watch isn't for you. And moving on to final thoughts, I mean, this is a well-made watch. You can tell the quality is there. There was attention to detail. There is a lot of nice elements on the watch, but is it going to be worth it to you? It is a very unique design. It can be polarizing to some people, but it's just what you value in a watch. Are you mainly aesthetic driven? Do you just care about it because it looks different? It's going to be kind of cool to pull out at like a watch meetup whenever they'll start back up again. For the entry level to this Meistersinger brand, you're looking kind of around the one to two grand mark. And I think for that, this is a pretty interesting value uh, because there's not a lot of like high end or entry level luxury brands you can get into at that price point. You still have like Oris, you have 
um, different various models from like Zinn, you have maybe kind of like vintage models that you can start looking at. But I think this offers something unique in the fact that it doesn't look like anything else. You're kind of maybe at under that two grand price point looking at more micro brands, some smaller independent kind of operations. And this is definitely unique among all those offerings. So if this kind of appeals to you, it's interesting, you think you'll enjoy wearing it, I think it's a great watch. I really, really enjoyed my time with it. I definitely would consider buying one again in the future. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another one.